Hello and welcome everyone to a brand new Let's Play with DJ, where today we're taking on Oxygen Not Included. So Oxygen Not Included is a survival space colony game where we are going to build a colony on a crash-landed planet and aim to survive against all the different challenges that we'll face. And hopefully we can escape the planet. So I'm going to start by starting a new game. And for this playthrough, I think I'm going to go through a no sweat campaign. So this is like the difficulty level. So I think when disaster strikes and it inevitably will take a deep breath and stay calm, you have ample time to find a solution. I think that fits the type of play style I want to go through today. So we'll go with no sweat. OK, so this is where we choose our different planet style. So there are various different planets. So Oce Oceania, Rhyme, Vedante, Arborea, oh, this looks like a volcano kind of planet. I think for a very first playthrough, I'm going to start with the initial Terra map, which is quite beginner friendly. I've played a few different playthroughs so far, again, getting into early to, through the early to mid game. I'm looking forward to playing through this with you all and getting through to slightly later game content. So let's go with the seed I found earlier on and we'll jump straight in. So for those of you unfamiliar with Oxygen Not Included, you start the game with three duplicates or colonists. So what we are doing here is we're going to choose our starting colonists. And it really does matter, as you'll find out that there is different traits that each colonist has. So, for example, on the three that we've been suggested so far, we have Devon, Nails and Otto. Devon with increased construction. However, he has a negative trait, which is decreased medicine. So he will be really unhelpful in, t in treating sick patients, but he is a really good builder. Versus Nails, who is a bit of an all-rounder, is good at tidying, doctoring, farming, and has increased excavation, but he is a slow learner, so won't be able to help his research as well as another colonist might. Research is pretty key for developing the colony and unlocking new te technologies. And then Otto we have as a super hard digger. and but However, he has a negative trait of bottomless stomach, which means he eat, needs to eat more in order to survive, which will put a lot of pressure on the colony relatively early on, as we will have to produce more food in order to sustain ourselves. So I'm going to go and re-roll through a few different options and until I find a combination that I'm happy with. Uh, ideally, I'm going to start by looking through for a... I'd like a good digger, a good... I think I need a good researcher and possibly... I might want to start with one with farming and then... I will go through and re-roll these until I'm happy. So, for example, here, Devon now has a digging skill plus nine excavation and is a night owl, so he works better at night versus the other the other duplicates. He is, however, um, he now, however, comes with the biohazardous negative trait where he has decreased germ resistance, so he has a higher chance of getting sick, which is not something I'm going to be wanting to play with. So I'm going to re-roll a few, few more times. So I'll be back in a second with my final three duplicates. Okay, so these are the three variations of duplicates that I've decided to settle on. So we, have, we now have Nisbet, Harold and Gossman. If you're interested in me renaming the characters after you, please do leave a comment below to let me know what you'd like me to rename the duplicates to. That would be really fun. So with Nisbet, we have our first digger. I have actually decided to switch the farmer out and go for a second digger in the early game because there's going to be quite a lot of exploring to do, and I think that will really help in terms of developing the, the colony. So two diggers and a researcher. So Nisbet is uncultured, which means that actually they don't need de decorations to be that high in order to get morale bonuses, which is pretty good. 
However, they cannot do decorating themselves, which is which is fine. That's a bit of a mid-game step anyway. However, Nisbet is a kitchen menace, which means she will not be doing any of the cooking around the colony. And Harold, we have as our researcher. He is an interior decorator, so he has a fair amount of creativity, which goes hand in hand with Nisbet not being that great at it. So Harold could perhaps take on that. However, Harold has got a critter aversion, which means when it gets to the time to build a ranch to maintain animals in the colony, it won't be Harold that will be will be doing that for us. And then we have our second digger in Gossman, who is an early bird, which means in the morning he is a little bit more productive. And However, he cannot do doctoring errands. So, with all that being said, we're going to embark on our perfect utopia. Off we go. Alert. I've awoken at the target location, but colonization efforts have already hit a hitch. I was supposed to land on the planet's surface, but became trapped many miles underground instead. Although the conditions are not ideal, it's imperative that I establish a colony here and begin mounting efforts to escape. Okay, so here are our three duplicates in our starting biome. So what I'll do is I'll pause quickly to take a little look around and explore the surroundings with us. So we have straight away got three patches of water so water is a vital resource in oxygen not included and what i'd like to do relatively soon is pull these water supplies into one starting reservoir essentially because that will help free up space to explore rather than having three different pools and we've been quite fortunate in that they've spawned relatively close together rather than over here or over here or directly above us etc so what we have to be doing with water is be very careful that we don't pollute it, as that's our drinking water, essentially. And that, well, I'll explain that a little bit later on. So first priorities for the starting colony is we need bathrooms and we need bedroom. So the game is split into what we call cycles, so the day and night cycle, essentially. And... In this playthrough, I like to do around between three to five cycles per episode. So what I'll do is I'll unpause and I'll get started. So I would like to dig... Start by... Digging out... The colony. So these these little blocks here are called Oxylite. These produce oxygen for the first few cycles of the game, which is pretty handy as, uh, as we are trapped in the middle of the planet and we're struggling to breathe. So if I flip through our overlays, we have the oxygen overlay. So blue is blue is good, light blue is good. The red sections are where it becomes highly carbon dioxide rich or, or is unbreathable. Might even be other different gases. So as we dig and explore, carbon dioxide will sink and oxygen will rise. So balancing the oxygen is a huge part of this game to ensure that our colony survives. So what I like to do is explore reasonably quickly. And for now, I am going to keep a three block section to the either side of the of the starting so one two three and then what i'll do is i will start to build out my start to build out my initial base Okay, and now we need to start by getting, as I mentioned, our toilets handy. So if I leave a door, space for a door, I would like two 
cancel that and start with if I would like a wash basin first. So the aim is to put the wash basins by the door and force our duplicants to wash their hands as they pass through the door. Because another thing to make note of is germs. So our duplicants can get sick if there are germs and these wash out outhouses will start to produce germs which we do not want to get into the rest of the base so to handle that i am going to add a door and i like to build bases four tiles high so one two three four and roof like so And as we are early on, I won't go and build too many tiles as I'd like to get our bedroom set up as well as we're on the first cycle. So building takes a little while. We're already halfway through cycle one. As soon they will start to go to get try and get ready to sleep. So as long as we have these toilets set up, I'll be happy because we don't want them to... We don't want them to miss out on going to the toilet because that will cause spills and would if i'd opened this up get into our water supply which would be a nightmare so what i'm going to do here is set the direction here so this means that as colonists pass this arrow that will force them to wash their hands and i'll do the same with that one so on the way in it doesn't matter but they'll go to the toilet and then they'll come out and wash their hands after that so i've got an idle duplicate which is not what I need. So what I'll do now is start one, two, three, door. And I'll start by building our bedroom. So furniture, lots, one, two, three. So hopefully we get this up and running. And what I need to do now is once I've have sorted that out is I am going to open up here because I need a source of water so a pitcher pump in order for the sinks to work so our oops are currently stuck until they build this ladder. So my aim is to have a ladder system all the way up either side of the base. And going three wide enables the oxygen, etc., to spread and gas to th spread quicker. So I need to keep going down a little bit further and get this picture pump in so our duplicates really don't like being wet so what i'll need to do is i'm going to eventually dig this down a little bit to lower the water Ooh, and we've had a cave in so i need to get the so i hadn't clocked that that was built out of sand and until these tiles are built they're not going to be able to sleep on the bed so the aim is to replace this fully with tiles eventually but the priority was getting the beds built first okay so they each have a bedroom they each have a toilet are just in time for cycle one to start to come to a close and now i can start to plan what i'd like to do base so priority i'm going to dig up to explore let's have a look at our gases there's there's plenty of oxygen up here but the more the higher i dig the more this carbon dioxide is going to sink which will then flood our base so i'll need to eventually dig down and i need to make a plan for what to do with the water what i'm going to do is i'll dig down 
here and pull our water to a reservoir. I can flood this down and then I'll have more space to space to explore. So these buildings are, are temporary for the moment. The, the outhouses and the, the bedroom, I'll eventually plan out the base to be slightly better organized. Um, I need to keep keep going exploring to the right and to the left. Ideally, I go around the toilet rather than through it. Okay, so I'll speed up the night time, particularly in the early game whilst they're sleeping. What I'll do then, bring now yeah okay so plan of action for this cycle is to explore a little bit higher and a little bit lower and try and get our water consolidated if we can it will be it will require a fair amount of digging But as I got two diggers to start with, okay. so they really don't like being underwater, which is understandable. And the aim is to not destroy oxalite if I can help it. It's, it's naturally, it's naturally disappearing anyway as we're consuming it see carbon dioxide is now starting to come so that's the other benefit of of digging down is the carbon dioxide is going to sink so what i might actually do start carrying the tunnel either side but now i'm happy with this as my water source i think i think that's fine They're making quick work of that, so need a there. Okay, so another important resource is food. So we've got currently around twenty thousand calories available to us. So uh, ceiling collapse. That doesn't sound good. Okay, they're fine. Just a uh, escaping out of the tunnel that I've built for now. Hey, so what I'll do is now start to dig up further. Okay, so then we also have what we need to keep our duplicates happy. So, if you look at the room overlay, so as you start to build certain rooms with certain items in them, they become what's known uh, as a room. So we have our barracks here, which is a small bedroom essentially where they all share sleeping quarters. But this gives them a morale bonus, which keeps them happy, as does the this being a latrine. So the aim is to eventually upgrade the latrine into a washroom where we have fully plumbed toilets, etc. But that's a, that's a little way off for now. So next step, I think, is for us to get research up and running if we can. So what I'd like to do is mop that liquid because our duplicates really don't want to walk through that. They'll get soggy feet, which is a morale, a negative mor morale trait. Okay, so they've mopped all that up. That's great. And they're just working on expansion at the moment. So I'm starting to get a picture of what we have around us. So down here we have polluted water. The green water is polluted water, which has its uses. It does have its uses, but not just yet. But for now, we want to keep our pure, clean water as far away as we can from that. So now, what do we have? We want to get... 
research setup now. Stations. Research station. So I'll, I'll put this up here to start with. So search station actually cancel that I want to make sure I have my layout set up the way I'd like it so I go I'll get that get this tiled out so one two three four root so then we will have door here uh, I'll start to dig out space I'll dig everything but the oxylite that's going to naturally get away anyway let's get them started on, on that I'll try and minimize how much I pause just to let time play through and the cycles play through. I think for this beginner episode, I'll do around five cycles, I think. So we're, we're, we're just coming to the end of cycle three. Okay, so as you come to the end of every, I think every four cycles or every third, end of every third cycle, you get a new printable. So in, this is where you get to choose between getting a, well, I'll show you. You can get a new duplicate to grow your colony or a care package. Okay, so let's take a quick look at what we've been offered. So unlike the beginning, you cannot re-roll your duplicates. You, this is what you are offered, and this is what you'll have to take. So we've been offered Camille, Ada, or Joshua, or a care package of 3,000 kilos of coal, which would be very useful later on. But let's take a look. So Camille would be a good, a great chef. However, I, mean, I don't tend to look at the positive traits as much as I, try and I tend to look at the negative traits. The duplicate has to be worth... The hassle of, of, of caring for them they have to add back to the colony with their skills and this one particular nar narcolepsy falling asleep that no matter how good a cook they are that's just not a trait that i'd like to take so unfortunately camille is out so <laughs> having an having falling asleep all over the all over the place completely in the middle of jobs when you've got things to do that's just gonna really hinder the colony and you need to have a good collective of duplicates in order to survive so whereas ada let's take a look at ada so ada's got operating a plus eight machinery which is great increased science her negative trait is shabby dresser the duplicates clearly never heard of ironing decor minus 15 so that will have a negative effect on the colony's decoration. So if I, if I'll show you the the decor filter once I've chosen the duplicate or not. So Ada's not too shabby, not too shabby, not too bad. Joshua Doctor in plus five. That's good, particularly as we don't have the other three aren't very good at doctoring, I think. Suit wearing athletics. That means they will run quicker, which is really handy in terms of building efficiency for the colony. It's a quick learner. Again, shabby dresser, but also has the additional negative trait of small bladder. So 
that's not it's not the end of the world they they just need to go to the toilet a little bit more i think but between the two i'd take the one that doesn't have that trait am i ready for a another colonist so i think so let's take let's take a fourth and then i don't think i'll take a new one for a little while so priority is now we have four duplicates i need to get a new bed set up for the do and then so much sand which just falls and messes up the rest of your colony Okay, so what have we got up here? So these little items here are meal wood. So that is a source of food. Eventually I'm going to try and build a farm, a meal wood farm, to help grow this more sustainably and produce enough food for our, for our duplicates. So what I'm going to do in this space is I'm going to start our research. So research takes hours, so we're going to get a little manual generator. And I'm going to need two batteries there connected by wires. What I'll do is I'll bring this over into our base. And hook up the power at that. So with research, what we get to do is unlock new technologies. So this little duplicate is going to be running on our treadmill to help power our batteries, store up power. And now we're going to take a look at research. So this technology tree is very extensive with things further to the right being more late game content. So we have sections such as food, power, Solid material, colony development, medicine, liquids, gases, exosuits, decor, computers, and rocketry. Okay, and what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start by trying to get a stable source of food. So I'm going to go with ahead and try and get meal preparation so there's some really fun things to unlock in here and explore new items i quite like all the plumbing the plumbing tech tree getting all the water supply automated and things like that that's pretty fun to do and we'll see later on so what so i have the research set i now need to make sure that our colonists are doing the right thing so if i take a look at our priorities so this is where we can choose what duplicates do what so i have three idle currently which won't do i'll come back to that in a second set them up to dig further so i want this to go give him something to do whilst i'm sorting it out so and they've got that to work on so that that's pretty handy so i'll get them set up are now doing that and whilst they're doing that i'll go back to setting up their priorities so we researcher i would like harold who was our research we chose at the start to really prioritize researching if he has free time he should be doing research and is there anyone else i would like to prioritize at the moment so attacking yes we've got skill here but that's pretty rare that we'd want to do that um for instance these little creatures here are called shine bugs and they produce light the only i would really only attack one if it had gotten in in the bedroom somehow because that would destroy our, our dupe sleep pattern which is not not what we want to do because that will make them grumpy and unproductive but attacking is pretty rare um doctoring again pretty hopefully pretty rare um, and for now I don't think I need to do too much everyone's just digging the only priority was making sure Harold's 
researching rather than working on construction. So that's fine. Okay, and then also what we can do is adjust our schedules, so our sleeping schedules, working schedule. What I'll look to try and do this when I get more than four duplicates is I'll put them on different shifts and shift them along so that the bathrooms don't get overworked or overrun. So I need to dig out that sand because that has fallen and blocked that building. And I think we've already completed research. That's how good that researcher I chose was. We've unlocked basic farming. So we've got algae terrariums, which produce oxygen. They're pretty handy. Antibox, ration boxes, compost. Electric grill, egg cracker, mess table, and farm tiles. So that's that's pretty useful stuff. So... And then what I'd like to do next is unlock, I think I'll start on getting some more power. Okay. That's all good. And whilst they're researching that, it's time to start exploring a bit further. If you're enjoying the game, let me know in the comments. What, what do you think of it? Have you ever played anything like this? Have you ever even played, have you played this game? Have you got any tips for me? I'm, I'm, I've played a few different playthroughs, but I'm always willing to learn new things. I hope you're enjoying it. Okay, so they're having a party because they finished the research. Keep laying out the base one. As such... Okay, so what have we got? We've got some new items. So we've got some oxygen diffusers, which will com convert algae into oxygen. And we also have algae terrariums, which do the same and reduce carbon dioxide. Let's take a look at our overlay. So as I'm digging up, we've got all this oxygen and it's causing the carbon dioxide to sink, which is fine. They're rare, our duplicates are rarely coming down this low, but I'll need to keep an eye on this. Our power grid's pretty small for the moment. We haven't got anything else on there. Temperature, that's another thing that's useful to look at. So green is good. Orange is more hot. Blue is, is cold. So we've got some buildings to explore up there, some heat. And heat is important when you're farming or raising animals. We don't want to kill our plants or our crops when food is so important we've got so this is the decor overlay that I was showing earlier so red is bad green is good um, I'll not start to worry too much about this until a little bit later on when I start doing some art to try and cheer the place up and now just a little bit of greens greens good germs so I've got some germs here which I believe is floral scent which isn't a problem because I didn't take any dupes with allergies so you can get duplicates that are allergic to floral scent which would be a negative mood bonus so I don't think that one's too much to worry about my, my main focus is the germs that are coming out of the outhouses but for now not a problem Farming overlay shows the different crops that are already around, that are wild, that we can harvest. And this is the real overlay that I showed you earlier. So what I need to try and set up now, I am going to create as a great hall, which is where our duplicates will go to eat. So one, two... Four. So this will give them a bonus for not having to eat on the floor. They're so quick at building. It's really, ah, I've got it still set on 
Ah, speed. No wonder I'm on cycle six already. Let's go back to slow mo. I don't want to rush for, through it too too much. Okay, so we've got a mess hall set. It's not currently a room because the roof tiles haven't been built. But I'll need to allow them to get up that high and ask them to dig that out. So once they do that, that should allow this to become a great mess hall. So there we go. It's a mess hall. That will give them a morale bonus, which is really good. So I need to now set some more research. We finished our power, so I've unlocked some jumbo batteries, which are more efficient than the beginner batteries. Some switches, some wire bridges, a coal generator, and a wood burner. That's all good. So what is next on in terms of research? I am going to look to start our water plumbing, I think. So pipes, etc. Start with the basic plumbing for now. Whilst they're doing that, I need to come up with a plan for what to do. Water supply. A hey, tricky one. Because the further down I let it go, the more I'm going to have to spend on pumping it. But that's that's not the end of the world. I'm working on, on, on plumbing now. So yeah, I'll, I'll keep digging down. Here, and I'll make it down here. Episode 1 and I'm already overcomplicating things. So yes, they're getting soggy feet. My plan is to maybe mop that once it gets low enough. It's too it's too deep, you can't can't mop. It has to be only a spillage, whereas that's not classing it as a spillage as such. Sand is really causing problems in terms of that yeah so they're having to come up and breathe because the carbon dioxide is f down here but that's good for the rest of the colony that's great once the water's down here and i've dug this out a little bit it's it should be good to go i okay, need a new research I don't want to go with toilets just yet. Gases. None of that just I think. Colony development. Search. Yeah, so before I can go any further than this tier, I need to unlock this one here to get advanced research. Let's do that. Okay, so they're just starting to get, get ready for bed. Uh, I'm going to get off the new principle at the end of this cycle, I think. Okay, yeah, they're just getting ready for bed. Okay. So at the end of cycle six, I'm going to call it an end of the episode here. We've made some good progress. We've got our bedroom started. We've got our research station set up, a beginner toilet and a beginner mess hall to help boost our duplicates needs. We're starting work on pulling the water down here in a little reservoir. I think that would be good to do. And there it is, just been offered a new duplicate. But I will start the next episode with choosing that new duplicate. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel and following along this series. That would be really, really helpful to me as I look to grow the channel. And let me know what your favourite part was. Do you, do you like the look of the game? That would be great. So that all said, thank you for playing with DJ. I hope to see you next episode. Goodbye.